Welcome back to my channel. If you are new, my name is Heather. I am the owner and author behind townsandhouse.com, where I help you implement systems and strategies in order to overcome the chaos and cultivate simplicity in your home and homeschool. And I'm a homeschooling mom of three kids, and we have been at this homeschooling thing for a decade which is a very long time. <laughs> um, today, I'm super excited because I'm going to be sharing with you our curriculum picks for the new year. I am going to be sharing Emma's picks first. Um, she is going to be going into seventh grade uh, if she were in public school. I do need to sort of preface this video with the fact that I teach to my kids um, ability level, not necessarily what grade level they are going to be in. So um, I am going to take you through what we are doing with Emma for seventh grade. Um, I was hoping to get this video up much sooner because I know for myself, I start looking at curriculum in March, which is when I started purchasing this curriculum. However, we have had a lot of changes that have, um, sort of come to the forefront and I wasn't sure how next year would be going um, because she has participated in public school band for the past several years. This year she is not going to be in band and um, I will leave a link to the video that I did about that so that you can see our decision, why, why we came to that decision, etc. Um, but I am going to be sharing Emma's seventh grade curriculum picks with you. I don't know if it's going to be everything. I have all of the main stuff, but I'm kind of up in the air with a few of the literature things because in the past we have used Brave Writer for our language arts, and I do that in conjunction with Sunlight, um, picking arrows based on books that we are going to be reading for sunlight literature anyways. But this year they changed the age ranges. I usually combine Jack and Emma um, in the arrows and they changed the age ranges and changed their programs. So that is still yet to be determined how we are going to figure that out. So I will show you what I have picked out for her and um, there are a couple other things. She just told me um, two days ago that she wants to start learning Spanish. I don't have a Spanish curriculum for her, so and, and I'm not entirely sold on Rosetta Stone. She has done Duolingo, the, the little free app in the past, and um, enjoys that. And I do have some some books that are, are both Spanish and English that I got at Target last year, I think. I also have French ones as well. So um, if you have ideas on <laughs> foreign language for middle school age, I would appreciate a comment below. So I am going to now take you into our very dark basement. So I'm sorry about the lighting ahead of time to show you what we are using for Emma for seventh grade. Here are the history books that Emma is going to be using for this year. She is going to be doing a one year US history course. And this is actually um, the spine here, A History of Us. And when I first started using Sunlight, I was so excited to see these books. I am a big US history person. I really enjoy history. So I knew that when it was time for Emma to be doing a higher level history, I really wanted to use these books. So I am going to do a little flip through of the first book just so that you can see. It is 10 volumes um, plus the 11th volume is a source book and an index of what you have. And the books are very current. It does go up through um, President Trump right now when he was elected. So these are very current. Okay. 
So this is the first one, A History of Us, The First Americans, Prehistory to 1600. And um, these are just short chapters, and I think that it's going to be really fun for us to go through them together. Um, this is supposed to be read by Emma uh, on her own. However, we really value um, doing school together out loud. So we are going to be doing all of the history as read alouds this year. So this is just what it kind of looks like inside the first volume. If you are interested in me doing a flip through of A History of Us, please just let me know in the comments below and I would be more than happy to flip through all of those books for you. Um, with Sunlight Core 100, there are a lot of history readers and so I will show you what those are right now. Um, the first one is Before Columbus, The Americas of 1491, then The Landing of the Pilgrims, we're writing the Constitution, Traitor, The Case of Benedict Arnold, The Great Little Madison, Sacagawea, The Slopes of War, The Boys' War, Dragon's Gate, What is the Panama Canal? The Yanks are coming. Moonshiner's Son. Cameron Townsend. Um, these are some of those heroes books. We have read several of these in the past. Um, I know that they have all kinds of different uh, books available. I haven't really explored any of the ones that are outside of what comes with the sunlight cores um, But I do know that they have a lot of wonderful choices if you are looking for books on specific people from history World War II Farewell to Manzanar Freedom Walkers, the story of the Montgomery bus boycott, and finally, The Cross and the Switchblade. So like I said, these are all the history books that we will be reading, and I am planning on doing these all as read-alouds for this year. I may not actually read all of them. I do know that if we get bogged down, um, A History of Us is on Audible. So um, I may go that route. However, I really do want to read through these books myself. So I have a feeling that I am still going to read them and maybe I'll look for some of these books as um, audible audiobooks if we need to. I'm not sure yet. Um, that is something that I kind of decide on the fly as we're going through the school year. If we are getting bogged down, then I will turn to audiobooks for a little bit of help. But if we are not, then I will continue reading them. Now I do have three kids in three different levels this year, so there is a lot more reading than just this. Um, but because Emma is on the younger end of this core, um, actually she is under the, <laughs> the age now, uh, she is 12, it used to be 12, was the low end, and now it's 13. So um, because of that, I do know that some of these will be a little bit more challenging for her to work through herself, not necessarily reading them, but the content. And so I want to be available for conversations. That's a lot of what our homeschool is, really thinking about the, the curriculum and making sure that we are um, having those big juicy conversations like Julie from Brave Writer Program talks about. Now I am going to get out all of Emma's literature books so that you can see those. So these are all of Emma's American historical literature books for the year. Um, they are not in order right now because I just pulled them all off the shelves, but I will go through them anyways. Bonanza Girl, 
Bound for Oregon, Elijah of Buxton, The Adventures of Tom Sawyer, They Loved to Laugh, Indian Captive, The Story of Mary Jemison, Amos Fortune, Free Man, Children of the Longhouse, and this is actually going to be an arrow for Brave Writer this year, so I think we will do the arrow of this particular book. Um, I have talked a little bit about how Brave Writer has changed the ages of their programs, so I had been combining my oldest two kids into arrows, and now I'm not sure what I'm going to do. So we are going to be starting with the Sunlight Language Arts program this year, and we may just pick and choose different arrows, darts, and boomerangs based on what we are reading right now. Stink Alley, Peace Child. This is the poetry book that we will be using um, for Emma for this year, A Treasury of Poetry for Young People. A Long Way from Chicago. Bud, Not Buddy. To Kill a Mockingbird. Out of the Dust. My Heart Lies South, The Story of My Mexican Marriage. This is the Young People's Edition. The Call of the Wild. One of the things that I really enjoy doing as well is if there is a movie based on one of the books that we are reading, we read the book and then we watch the movie and we do like a comparison. When You Reach Me, The View from Saturday, Rules of the Road, Dear Mr. Henshaw, Rip Van Winkle, and this is actually a coloring book as well. So it is the story plus coloring pages. So I thought that was kind of neat. Maniac McGee, Keeping Score, A Year Down Yonder, and the book that I do not have in this pile that she is also doing is um, a Wrinkle in Time, and the reason I don't have it is because she's already reading it. Technically, that is supposed to come at the end of the year, towards the end of the year. However, she wanted to read it, and I have no problem with her reading that right now. So these are all the American historical literature books that Emma will be using for the 2020-2021 school year. Now, I know it looks like an awful lot of reading, um, and it is. If she is having trouble getting through some of the reading, if, if, um, if we're not able to keep up with the reading schedule, I am not opposed to her using Audible for some of the books. Um, we would pick and choose which ones she may want to read herself and which ones she may want to follow along in with Audible. And also having all of these books does give us the opportunity, if there is a book that we really are struggling to get through, we just don't connect with the book, I am totally fine setting the book aside. Um, I do not want to force my kids to read books that they really are having trouble with because I do not want to kill their love for reading. Um, I know that that's probably not a popular opinion, and I do expect her to read certain books, but if it's a book that I know is not really working for us, I am fine with setting it aside. Um, we usually set aside maybe one or two books each year um, for for each of my kids, and that is that's just something that we've done, and I think there's like 26 books maybe, that she's supposed to read for uh, American Historical Literature this year, and that's a really large amount of books for seventh grade, so I am totally fine um, putting some aside if we need to. Now we are going to move on to Bible, and then math and science. So for Bible this year, Emma has The Bible Jesus Read, Why the Old Testament Matters, 
evidence for Jesus, discover the facts that prove the truth of the Bible, God's will, God's best for your life, why pray, and a Bible study sampler. So we have not done a whole lot with the Sunlight Bible programs. We do usually use their um, Bible books that come, like the actual Bible, but we do not follow their schedule. I usually do devotions with all of my kids and we kind of do a Bible study all together. Um, but this year I think we will try some of the books that came with the program just to see if we like them, if Emma likes them. For science this year, Emma is going to be doing Exploring Creation with Physical Science. And um, when I ordered the curriculum, I did not realize that Apologia was going to be updating this program. So there is a third edition now available, but we are going to stick with the second edition right now. This is the entire course on a CD that she can put into the computer and it takes her through the entire textbook and has all of the questions and tests, etc., within these CD-ROMs. Now, I was not sure what to expect getting this. Um, we haven't really done much online for classes, and this isn't even online, this is just on the computer. I usually am much more in depth. So and on my own pretty much. So I did end up purchasing this Exploring Creation with Physical Science student notebook. And this does have all of the questions um, in here. So instead of her typing the answers into the computer, she can write them down here. And um, I, I wasn't sure how I wanted to work that uh, with the with the computer portion I'm not sure I really want her to just enter her answers on uh, on the computer program I don't know how that works for grading um, I feel like that might just be a little more difficult for me to deal with but um, this is what we have gotten for her and so she can write her answers down and then she is still able to press answer on the computer and get the correct answer um, so that she knows whether she was right or not. And then Sunlight does also have a um, instructor's guide for this science program. So each each day there is uh, each day there is what you're supposed to do, um, what you are doing on the CD, what you do on your own, the experiments, etc. And there are, I believe, some notes. Let me see if I can flip the page. So there are some notes on the bottom, vocabulary, terms and names, and just some, some little notes if you need them. Um, it also tells you what supplies you'll need for experiments throughout the week. Um, and so that is a great thing to have so that you kind of have an idea of where you should start and stop each day. I'm not sure if we're going to do the five-day program or if I am going to make it into a three-day program, which is more often what we do for science. We usually do it about three days a week. Um, it makes their lessons a little bit longer, but I find that they're more able to understand the material and um, remember <laughs> the material. So. Um, we will see how that goes. I'm not entirely sure how I'm going to structure it yet, but this is just the, the review, the curriculum reveal video. So if you would like a more thorough look at this student uh, notebook, please let me know. This is still available for purchase, this edition, and I'm not sure what differences they have to the third edition, but, um, 
And, and we'll see how this one goes. I might look into the third edition and see if there's a summary of the changes that were made, but um, for right now, I think that this will work just fine for us. For math this year, I'm still up in the air. This is a really good curriculum reveal video when I don't exactly know what I'm going to do. So uh, with the Core 100, the recommendation was Algebra 1 from Matthew C. Now we have never used Matthew C. This curriculum is completely new to us and I don't know how it will be. I honestly don't because I am not used to this teaching style and I don't know how it will work for Emma, but we are going to give it a try. Now, we have used Singapore Math from their K program all the way through 6B, and then the past couple of years we've also used teaching textbooks in addition to Singapore Math. Now, we don't use every bit of teaching textbooks, but I do have the kids go in for extra practice or sometimes if there's a concept that they're struggling with, I will have them use teaching textbooks for a while. And I also use it um, during our breaks when I am not actively teaching them math. I still have them do a lesson each day from teaching textbooks. I just think it's good to to keep that constant math practice, especially in the early um, early grades, because they just need to know all of these different things, and practice helps them continue to understand. So, I um, right now Emma is finishing up pre-algebra with teaching textbooks. She finished the six B Singapore math in February, and because of that. We just, um, we were about halfway through um, teaching textbooks pre-algebra, and so she is just doing the second half of the pre-algebra program to shore up her skills so that she is ready for Algebra 1. Um, I have read that you can go right from 6B Singapore to Algebra 1. Um, but I just wanted to have her get a little more practice, especially since she would be in seventh grade in public school. And because of that, Algebra 1, seventh grade Algebra 1 is a little early. Um, I did do advanced math myself when I was in school, so it's not unheard of. However, I think that usually in homeschool, Algebra 1 is more eighth grade or freshman year. So we will see how this goes. Um, like I said, she is still in pre-algebra, which she should finish up probably by the end of July. And um, I am also going to subscribe to the Algebra 1 program with teaching textbooks. Uh, I really like their program. And I have done a review in the past about their online version, which has all the correcting and everything. So I will leave a link for that. I don't know which direction we will go, if we will stay with this, if we will go with teaching textbooks, but I will have them both. And whichever one is working for Emma is the one that we will stick with. Um, this also comes with an instructional CD. And I believe that what she does is she will watch the CD and then there's um, questions each day that she has to do. And you can either do more or less depending on um, how your student is doing, if they need more practice or if they are understanding it. I think it's kind of, um, you can go as quickly through the program or slowly through the program as you would like. So if you have used Matthew C and you have experience with this Algebra 1 program and how it leads into the upper level maths, um, I would love to hear your comments because I just don't know. I've done so much research. Singapore ends at 6B, which I knew several years ago and I knew that I was going to run into an issue <laughs> with um, the upper level maths, but I haven't come to a to a solution yet. So this is what she is going to start out with for math, this and teaching textbooks. But like I said, right now she is still in pre-algebra. So 
Um, when she is finished with the pre-algebra, then we will move on to this. And if you are wondering about electives, I do not have any electives to show you. She is going to be doing um, the foundations middle school program from Dave Ramsey, which is um, about financial literacy and learning about budgeting and bank accounts and all of that stuff. That is a completely online program. Obviously, I don't have teaching textbooks in front of me because that is a completely online program. As far as music and art and physical education and that kind of stuff, we have always used um, things off of YouTube for art. We will do little classes, drawing classes, watch art videos. My kids love uh, to draw and love to make art. So that is all stuff that they will continue to do. Um, we don't really follow a curriculum for that. And then um, with music, Emma does play the saxophone and she sings and we hope to continue doing that. Um, I don't know if my video about our changes for next year will be up yet. If it is, I will leave a link so you understand what's going on with Emma and band. And that is about everything. So thank you so much for watching this. If you want me to do a flip through of any of these books, or if you want to see the instructor's guides um, up close, please just let me know in the comments and I will get those videos up for you. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.